where that I should ask you where the courts stand on the issue of entry results saved on IREF as evidence and used in the case, since it has been stated that INEC didn't break the law by using IREF or something. That's what he's saying. Who, who said INEC did not break the law? That is not true. Uh, so Fabian, that's what Fabian took is. INEC, INEC actually broke the law. There is no, INEC has not said he did not break the law. Okay. okay. If, if there is anyone that has evidence or any source, any material, any statement by INEC where they have said they did not break the law on the issue of IREF, let the person share it. You can share the link as a comment. I want to see. Uh, okay. I, so, INEC, INEC has not said it. Even, uh, even at the tribunal, that is not going to be the argument. Mm -hmm. What they will be, they will be, what they will say will be to tell the courts the facts that should be given to that breach. Mm. Okay, okay. They, they are not going to argue on the breach because by their own guidelines, right? Yeah. I explained the last time that the Electoral Act, if you look at Section sixty sub five, I think you can read it. Section sixty sub five of the Electoral Act. Please read it. Okay, uh, section 60 is on the counting of votes and, uh, and forms. Uh, five, it says the presiding officer shall transfer the results, including total number of accredited voters and results of the ballot in a manner as prescribed by the commission. So what does that mean? What is the transfer here? That is the transmission. Yeah, the transmission that they said they were gonna do. It says in a manner as prescribed as, by the commission. Yes. So what, what, what the question we have, the question we should all ask is, what manner did the commission prescribe? And the answer is in their guidelines, paragraph 38. So, so let, let me read also section six, where it says, a, a presiding officer who willfully contravenes any provision of this section commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not more than 500,000, or imprisonment for a term of at least six months. Look, this argument that election didn't have to be, that the result did not have to be transferred at the, at the real time, at the police unit, for me is nonsensical. I mean, I don't, I don't respect that opinion until the court rules otherwise. You know why? Mm. That sub six you just read makes it a criminal offense. Yeah. For presiding officer to default, to willfully refuse to transfer. Mm. Now, I explained the process last at the first part of this discussion last week. I said that election was not an event. Election is a process. Yes. And I, and I took time to explain the processes. Once the process at the pulling unit has ended, all that the presiding officer has to do is to go to the registration area, which is the word collation. Once he has arrived the collation point, the presiding officer's duty has finished. Hmm. It is not left for the result to be handed over to the collection officers to be collated. So if you don't transfer at the place where your primary assignment is, where you are supposed to carry out your functions, mm -hmm. is it now at the point of collation that you will now transfer? Or what is the mode of transmission? If, if you know, let's, let's say that that is not the appropriate, the appropriate way to look at it. Mm -hmm. What is the mode of transmission, the, the mode of transfer? I clearly said the manner in which the transfer was to be done. Yeah. And they have breached that. They have breached that. So I, I, I want to wait mm -hmm. and see how the courts will approach okay. this. Whether they will say, yes, truly, the transmission was not done when it was supposed to be done. However, we don't feel that is enough reason to nullify the election. Let the court say so. Okay.